Hello everyone. Welcome to this course on Introduction to Data Science. In this first video, I will explain to you why we need data science, why data science is so important at this moment, and I will try to relate data science with other hot topics such as big data, data-driven decision-making, and data mining. Let me start with explaining the following equation. Wealth is equal to power. First of all, what do we mean with wealth? Wealth is accumulation of resources. Of course, it can, um, it can mean money. If you have a lot of money, then you are wealthy. But we want to define wealth in a broader way and also have wealth through, for example, land. Or maybe if you have oil, you can be wealthy. Or a lot of followers. Right? So wealth can mean different things. And it depends on the time where you live, how you get wealthy. So nowadays it's mainly, mainly money maybe, but maybe in the past, before there was a way to, to pay to money, maybe it was land that was making you wealthy. Right? So wealth is the accumulation of resources. Power is the ability to have an influence, impact on your environment. For example, it's the ability to change things in your city or country. And very often, power is a thing we want. We want to have an influence on what happens around us. Or maybe we think that we know best how to organize the structure of our city or of our country. We need power for that. We need influence. How do you get that? You can get it by becoming very wealthy. And you can think of numerous examples where you see that wealthy people, wealthy companies, they're also very powerful companies. So this equation, wealth is equal to power, is something that holds throughout history. It's, it holds today, it holds in the past, in the 50s, during the Roman Empire, um, and so on and so on. How do we get wealthy? To get more powerful at the end. Well, one way is to have knowledge. Because if you know things, especially if you know things that other people do not know, then you can use this information in your advantage. An example is, for example, insider trading. If you buy and sell stocks, then of course, you never know if the stock price will go up or go down, unless you have extra information that someone else does not have. If you know that for some reason a stock will go down in the next week, then you can start selling your stocks before everyone else has this information. And of course, for that reason, insider trading is, of course, forbidden. Another example was uh, during the COVID crisis. When the COVID crisis started, there was no um, vaccine available. And what you needed at that moment, you do not need wealthy people. Because although you have a lot of money, you don't have the knowledge to create a vaccine. However, there are people that studied for this and that know how to search for the correct vaccine. And pharmaceutical companies are trying to catch these people to have them work for them because their knowledge can be used for the companies to create more and more wealth. Right? So knowledge is equal to wealth. Important information, important knowledge is often contained in data. We can search in a data set to learn new things that we can use to become more wealthy and therefore more powerful. And big companies, tech companies such as Google, Apple, Microsoft, they know this. They know that in the information, the massive information they have about you and me, there is important information, knowledge about our, for example, shopping behavior on our um, work routines and our daily lives. Uh, there is information about our political opinions. So they can use this data, search in this data, to get important knowledge, and therefore these companies are very rich, very wealthy companies, and very powerful companies. Of course, you know that there are many free apps, apps that you can download on your phone, you can use and you don't need to pay. Of course, free does not really exist. If you have an app 
that is free, it's probably free because you are giving the app, you are giving them your data. You are paying, not with money, but you are paying with your data. Because the app knows I don't get money, but I get data. I can use this to create new knowledge and that creates wealth. Here is another example of how data science can be used to spot patterns in the data and in this case, maybe find a terrorist. So what's the situation? We had 9-11 where there were terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center, an event that changed the world. And in the aftermath, after the attacks, the question was, could we have prevented this event? Was there a way to find out that this could have happened? And on November 6, 2002, President Bill Clinton said, well, we found that there were five terrorists involved in these 9-11 attacks and we knew them in the sense that we had them listed in a database. The problem was that they were in a database but we did not detect them quick enough to prevent the 9-11 attacks. And for example, one of the terrorists was less than two years in the country and had 12 houses. And then Bill Clinton said, if somebody has been here a couple of years or less and they have 12 homes, they are either really rich or up to no good. It shouldn't be that hard to figure out which. So the thing here is that the terrorist, this one terrorist with the 12 houses was in the database and you could have spot him. Because what you can do is you can use the data set, find patterns in the data, and then you can distinguish between the regular observations and the special atypical observations. Someone, like Bill Clinton said, someone who is less than two years in the country has 12 homes, it's a special case. You will not find many of these situations in your database. So at least you can spot them and you can inspect them. And maybe that would have been a way to detect what was going to happen. So what is special about today's data revolution? Because data has always been very important. People study data since a very long time to get new knowledge, to create new information for them. However, today, and that is special, the gathering of data is much easier than in the past. Now with our phones, computers, social media, wearables, and so on, we create every moment of the day new data. Whereas in the past you need, for example, a questionnaire that you hand out to people to understand how people deal with certain problems, or you have special lab tests where you invite people to run or to cycle, and then you study their behavior. Now that is all much easier. So we can create data sets very efficiently, very quickly. Secondly, how we access data is also much easier. With a regular laptop, you can, you can, um, you can be a data scientist because you can open very large data sets. There is software, there are enough tools available to investigate, inspect these data sets, to clean them, to uh, apply models on them, and so on and so on. We have enough computer power to deal with, with all these data sets. So it's the gathering and the processing and the studying of data nowadays is much more easier than it was in the past. However, um, if you think about data and how we create data every time, every day, what with whatever we do, then you can imagine that at some point companies have huge data sets because for every customer they have data over every day of the last five years say and they have thousands, millions of customers. So these are huge data sets and at some point it can happen that your data set is becoming too big. And then we talk about big data. Big data we mean data sets that are so big that we need special methods, special techniques to deal with these data sets. And this course is on data science. 
And it's important to understand that data science and big data, they are different things. Data science is really the study of data sets, the extraction of knowledge from a data set, whereas big data refers to the very, very large data sets that require new models, new techniques, new skills to handle them. Data contains information. And to illustrate that, let me give the example of the first life table. So what's a life table? A life table is a table where in the first column I have the ages, zero years old, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. In the other column, I have the probability that you survive another year. So I can take, for example, the line where we have someone who is 30 years old, and then I can read what is the probability that this, this person will survive another year. And how do you construct a life table is by analyzing data. And it was John Ground and also Edmund Halley that started with this idea, that said, well, we want to understand how people die. So they started to observe that, to count in a certain period, how many people do we have, and of that group, how many people died. And a very important fundamental breakthrough of that study, of analyzing the data, was that the most important factor to explain why someone died was the age. Of course, there are other factors. There is, for example, rich versus, versus poor. There's a difference in how people die between the rich and the poor, of course. But the most important factor is the age. If you want to understand that, first look at the age, and then you look at other things. And that is why they said, well, a life table is a perfect, very efficient, very easy tool to understand for everyone how that occur. What is my probability of dying? It depends on many factors, but the age is the most important, so you can focus on that. And that's why, still today, we use life tables. Every year, in different countries, they will create life tables. They will create tables that tells us, well, at this moment, this is how people die. We can compare these life tables with five years ago, ten years ago, to see the evolution of mortality and longevity of different people. All right, so that was by studying data that we can understand how people die, and that is important, for example, for the life insurance sector, for pensions, and so on. Richard Miller introduced the business intelligence and data mining, where we say, well, if we want to have a competitive advantage for our company in relation with another company, we can do data mining. We can gather information, data, try to extract new information that we did not know, but also our uh, competitors did not know, and that can be used to have an advantage and to make extra money compared to your competitors. And for example, in marketing, it's used a lot to understand, well, what, what type of campaigns should we start and who should we target? What is the best strategy? How do you know that? You analyze data of the past. What worked in the past? What can we learn from past campaigns? And so on. And so in all these situations, we have a data set that we need to analyze. And there can be, say, two types of information that you get out of your data set. The first one is what you could call obvious or semi-obvious information. Things that maybe you could also have known by going another way. By, for example, building a theoretical model, by using expert knowledge, and so on. Right? So that is not really information that only can be extracted using data science, but data science can, um, can tell you well what your initial idea was, is correct. Or data science can tell you, well, the model, the theoretical model that you have built, indeed is confirmed by the data. The other type of information are the very unexpected uh, discoveries. Things that you had no idea that could hold, but the data shows, well, it's the case that this influences this. Right? 
and in that case it means that well you are surprised that this holds but at least you know well we did our data science study we did it correctly and now we can change we can update our strategy and take this new information into account let me give you two examples of how data science is used in practice nowadays the first situation we are in 2004 in florida and at that point there was a threat that a hurricane would hit florida and a walmart thought well this could be an opportunity for us because if we understand what people will buy extra in such a situation then maybe we can prepare for that and it means that we can sell more items and the interesting thing is that they did a data science study so they um, asked their team to analyze the data to analyze situations where there was a similar um, similar threat of a hurricane hitting florida and what were people doing buying at that time and they were not finding that people would buy certain things that maybe you can anticipate by thinking very hard maybe you think it are cans of water that people buy or it is maybe toilet paper what people buy no they found that people buy strawberry pastries a lot and they buy beer a lot so with this rather surprising information they could uh, stack their shops with pastries and with beers which shows that and they could sell it of course um, it means that analyzing the data getting new knowledge in and using this knowledge in your business strategy means more profit and that's important for a shop another well-known application of data science is the um, investigation of churning behavior of customers so what does it mean to churn it means that customers are switching from one company to another company so you have a telecom operator for example and the telecom operator knows that from time to time customers will go to another operator because maybe it, it is cheaper there and churning is expensive because you want to keep your customers and you don't want them to go to somewhere else it means that if lots of people are churning are moving to other companies a company is making a loss and to prevent that maybe you can try to understand why people are moving from one company to another because then you can try to avoid this situation by for example making your offers to these people more attractive meaning that companies are willing to spend money they know that churning is costly so they are willing to spend some extra money to limit the degree of churning and how you do that is by data science by studying the data and trying to understand what is going on why people churn and then changing your strategy accordingly 